Blender is a great artist tool, and many times making something look amazing doesn't require precision. But if, for example, you're making something that is made up of multiple parts that fit together, then precision can be important. Or maybe you just like knowing that your Blender model closely matches an object in the real world. In this Blender video, I'll show you some of the things that you can do to add precision to your modeling. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.79b. I'll start by explaining what happens to the mesh when an object is scaled in object mode. Or more precisely, I'll explain what does not happen to the mesh. When you scale an object in object mode, the dimensions of the mesh are not changed. To show this, I'll tab over into Edit Mode, press N to open the Properties panel, and in the Mesh Display section, I'll put a check mark next to Length. This will display the length of the edges. Here you can see that the length of all the edges is 2. Now I'll switch to Object Mode, scale the object, and then come back here to look at the edge lengths. So I'll tab back into Object Mode, and then scale the length of the cube on the y-axis by 2. Now when I tab into Edit Mode, you can see that even though the edges look longer, Blender still considers the length to be 2. This can result in some of the Edit Mode tools not working as you might expect them to. Things like Bevel and Inset may be uneven. But when you scale it in Object Mode, there is a way to make the mesh dimensions change, and I'll show you how to do it. So I'll tab back into Object Mode. Now if I press Ctrl A, the Apply menu will pop up. Then by selecting Scale, the scale will be applied and the dimensions of the mesh will change. Now when I tab into Edit Mode, you can see that the length of the edges in the Y direction are now 4. So if you've scaled your object in Object Mode, then it can be a good idea to apply the scale before editing the mesh in Edit Mode. One of the keys to precision modeling is to use the keyboard to enter numeric values but it's important to know how the numeric values are used. I'll use an example to explain this. I'll switch to Face Select mode and select the front face. I'm going to use the Inset tool with a numeric value of 0.5. To do that, I'll press I, and then I'll type 0.5, then Enter. After pressing Enter, an Options panel will open up on the side. If there's a check mark next to Offset Even, then the numeric value that I entered refers to this thickness. If you remove the check mark, then the numeric value that I entered refers to the length of this edge. Typically, when I'm working with a mesh like this, I'm interested in the thickness, and so having the offset even option is very useful. However, if I'm working with a round mesh like this, then I'm typically interested in the length of this edge. I'll inset this face by 0.5. If I turn Offset Even off and on, you can see that it doesn't make a big difference, but it does make a difference. Since the length of this edge is what I want to control, I would remove the check mark. One of the common things that's done in Blender is to extrude a face and then scale it. It looks like this. I'll press E to extrude, and then S to scale. Then E to extrude again. You'll notice that when I do this, the side area is thicker than the top. This is because after doing the first extrude, I scaled it. When you use scale to resize something, you don't specify a specific distance. Instead, you're specifying a percentage. Since the cube that I started with is twice as wide as it is high, then after scaling, the side areas ended up twice as thick as the top. In some cases, this may be what you want. But instead, what if you wanted the side and top areas to both have the same thickness? And what if you wanted to specify that thickness by entering a specific distance? When you're modeling a mesh with Blender and you want to be precise, it's nice to be able to use distance values, and I'll show you some ways to do just that. So let's redo this extrude example, and this time we'll set the thickness of both the side and top to 0.2. So I'll use Ctrl Z a couple of times to undo the last operations. For this, we're going to use the inset tool that we looked at earlier. So I'll press I for inset, then point to, then enter. Not only did the inset tool make both the side and top areas the same thickness, but it allowed me to enter a distance value of point to instead of a percentage value. And you'll notice that offset even is checked, which applies our 0.2 value to the thickness instead of this edge distance. Now I can extrude it, 
And I'm also going to be precise when I do this. So for example, to extrude by 1.5, I'll press E, then 1.5, then Enter. Now let's look at another example. I'll press E to extrude, and then S to scale. Then E to extrude again. This time I scaled it up in size. If I rotate this around to the back, you'll see that it has the same issue as before, where the side area is thicker than the top. So if I want the side and top areas to both have a thickness of 0.2, then we need another way. And unfortunately, we can't use the inset tool. That's because inset needs a face to work, and the face is not larger than the cube. So I'll show you another way. This time I'll extrude outward first by pressing E, then 1.5, then Enter. Now I need to select the new ring of faces. I can do that by holding down the Alt key while right-clicking one of the edges. Now over in the Extrude menu, I'll select Region Vertex Normals. Then I'll drag the mouse to size it up while looking at the value down here. I'm looking to see whether the value is positive or negative. Depending on which direction the normals are facing, it could be either one. In this case, increasing the size shows a positive value, and so I need to enter a positive value. So I'll type 0.2, then Enter. Over on the side in the Options panel, you'll notice that the Extrude Region tool has a checkbox for Offset Even. I'll make sure that it's checked so that it will be the thickness that's set to 0.2. You can see that the side and top areas are both the same thickness. When you use this method, you'll end up with extra geometry on the front, but it's easy to remove. Just select the middle face, press X, and select Dissolve Vertices. Now I'll show you another method to do this. This time I'll start by selecting the front face and then extrude two times. For the first extrude, I'll press E and then click the right mouse button. This extrudes without moving the vertices. Now I'll press E, then 1.5, then Enter. Then I'll hold down the Alt key and right-click one of these edges to select the ring of faces. Now I'm going to use the Shrink Fatten tool to increase the size by 0.2. To use it, either click the Shrink Fatten button or press Alt-S. Then drag the mouse to size it up while looking at the value down here to see if the value is positive or negative. The value is positive, so I'll type 0.2 and then enter. Then again, I'll add a check mark next to offset even. You can see that the side and top areas are both the same thickness. So far, when we've set the thickness of the side and top areas, we've set them all to the same thickness. But what if we wanted just one of them to be different? To do that, let's start off by insetting the front faces by 0.2. Now let's say that we want the left area to have a thickness of 0.5. So what I'll do is switch to edge mode and select this left edge. Since this edge is currently at 0.2, we need to move it by 0.3 to get a total thickness of 0.5. So I'll press G to move, then Y to restrict the movement to the Y axis, then 0.3, then Enter. Now the thickness on the left area is 0.5. This worked just fine, but I needed to do a little math to determine how far to move it. If I wanted to avoid the math, I could start by moving the edge to the left side, which we'll use as a reference point, and then move it to the right by 0.5. I'll show you what this looks like. To make it easier, I'll change the snap element to edge. This will let me snap to an edge when I hold the control key down. Now with the edge selected, I'll move it to the left by pressing G and then Y, and then I'll hold the control key down to enable snapping while I position the mouse over this left edge. When you see the small circle appear over the edge, it means that this is the edge that you will be snapping to. Then just click the left mouse button to confirm the operation. Now that we're aligning with the left edge, which is our reference point, we can move it by 0.5. So I'll press G, then Y, then 0.5. This method of moving an edge to a reference point and then moving it to its final location also works for vertices and faces too. It's also useful when you add an edge loop. So for example, let's say that I want to add an edge loop at a distance of 0.5 from this back edge. 
Then I would press Ctrl R for edge loop and left click here. Then drag it to the back edge and left click again. Then I'll move it a distance of 0.5 on the X axis by pressing G, then X, then 0.5, then Enter. A moment ago, I set Blender to snap to an edge and I used it to move this edge to a reference edge. But it's also useful for aligning things. So for example, let's say that I want to move this edge up to the same height as this edge. Then what I would do is to first check and make sure that I'm snapping to an edge. Then I would select this edge, press G to move, then press Z to restrict the movement to the Z axis, then hold down the control key to enable snapping, and click the edge that I want to align it with. Now these two edges are the same height. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.